This homeowner's belongings were all over the yard, but today they've got piles of things that they want to toss, some things they're wanting to save. But it's not a fun packing snow to go play snowfall fights with. It's more of a an icy mess. There's barely any storage left for canned foods in this kitchen, but it's the refrigerator where the turkeys are kept that's empty. With a little TLC, they say, and lots of money, they hope to unlock these doors. To the left of me here is US 45, and that road has been very busy today. Social media is a huge part of the campaign. Organizers are asking, instead of taking that narcissistic selfie, take a picture with what you support or why you give. But guess what? It helps with those procrastinators and night owls because now you can shop all hours of the night. If you are getting out for the first time since Friday, you're probably going to find a thick layer of this ice and snow on your car. You might even find a little dusting from last night. They had over 4,000 packages come in at 4, another 4,000 came in this afternoon, and another 4,000 that are supposed to be here at midnight. Today is so busy, but we are going to take you even closer to this sorting process right now. One box, two box, three box, four. These are Santa's helpers with packages galore. This time of year, yeah, sometimes we got to kind of keep it moving. <laughs> it's organized chaos for Carol and Russ to move all these packages they don't buy. These are little kids' presents or, you know, this is something to families. And it's really, I mean, it's always important, but especially this time of year. All right, start scanning. Each parcel goes through scan before being delivered yeah. by the postal man. Live updates so customers can track their packages. 5,000 are sent on a typical day, but that number has doubled and they're only halfway. During the holiday season, we'll do uh, an extra shipments from uh, our main distribution hub in Louisville. And I mean, they've been coming in 100% full trucks the last few days. So one box, two box, three box, four. Here comes the packages to your front door. Now, if you are going to wrap packages, that's okay, but they say make sure that you put a uh, label on the outside as well as underneath the wrapping, just in case the wrapping gets torn in the process. The man who lost his rifle says that he wants it back, and the sheriff is hoping that you can help. Along these quiet streets of Graves County, car thieves have been lurking in the night. No, it's not concentrated to one area. I mean, it's uh, scattered countywide. Sheriff Redmond says it's this easy. Car thieves look to see who left their door unlocked. Take a seat inside and look for something valuable. GPS, radar detectors, CDs, uh, you know, anything quickly that they could get their hands on. Kenny Glover is one of the victims. The burglars took his 270 caliber Remington rifle that looks like this, a gift from his parents nearly 30 years ago. You can replace that, buy another one, but you can't replace something that's that special that somebody gives to you like that. It's just, that makes it burn a little worse. That gift was taken from the back seat of Kenny's truck that was parked just like this, a mere eight feet from his front door and under motion sensor lights. But on Saturday night, he left it unlocked. And I never do that, so they just got, they got really lucky and I got really unlucky. Having this piece of cold blue steel in the wrong hands worries Sheriff Redman. We don't know what they're going to do with it, if they're going to try to sell it, if they're going to try to keep it or if they're going to have it with them next time that they start breaking into cars. Now the sheriff adds that while the holidays are upon us, we have to remember to always remove those shopping bags and purses from your cars and lock those doors. They started this Deputies for the Hungry campaign three years ago, and it's grown from harvesting 400 pounds of meat a season to 3,000 pounds. And then they donate these two-pound bags to several food banks and area kitchens, helping families get a good meal for this holiday. But it's a toss-up who benefits the most, the families or the inmates who prepare the meat. It's not easy work. Opening weekend, we done 29 deer, 19 the first day. But Justin Collins and Randy Carter say it's well worth it. I enjoy it. They are two of several inmates who process the deer donated to the Henry County Sheriff's Department for the Deputies for the Hungry Campaign. Eddie Forrest killed this doe this morning. And it'll make several pots of chili and soup. He's an avid hunter who doesn't mind donating his venison. I've got plenty 
and in my freezer and there's other people that need them. The hard work continues inside the processing center. This is the second part of the process. Anthony Brewer is serving a 12 year sentence. He says this work has changed him. Before I didn't even think about it. I mean, I didn't, that's their problem. But now I realize that there's people that depend on this and without it, they're hungry. From the grinder to the freezer to your table. And this work is a privilege. Inmates have to earn their spot inside the Deer Processing Center. Brewer is thankful for each day. Got a chance to help the community and, and do my time a little better than some because I work. I mean. And the inmates don't miss a thing. The hides of the deer are donated to the local Elks Club, who then turn those into winter gloves for local veterans. Anybody is welcome to donate a deer to the program by dropping it off at the Henry County Sheriff's Department that is in Paris, Tennessee. The lady I'm about to show you uses her talents to make others happy. She's never asked for anything in return, but recently got a thank you card that surprised her royally. In small towns like this, Sometimes it's the little things that loom large. One, two, and sometimes three, four. It's those who need help that actually help out. Turn it, pull it. Her nimble hands help tell the story of 83 year old Mary Anderson. All of it is made by just, I guess, pure luck. Knit one, pearl two, and this woman crocheted for a prince in royal blue. I was doing it for the pleasure of giving somebody something that was homemade. A set of blue booties and a hat just like this one were handcrafted for Prince George. Her daughter-in-law, Sandra Anderson, made sure they got there. Had to fill out custom forms. Cost $12.75 to send her a little white box, which I was seriously doubting would ever get across the ocean. But it did. In less than a month, she got a royal return. Said the Duke and the Duchess of Cambridge were most touched by this awful gift and send you their warmest thank and best wishes. And now Mary feels like a princess. You could have knocked me down to a feather cause here in Tennessee, sending it plum across the ocean and then in less than a month, I got a thank you note. And that's the tale of a queenly woman. More than I expected. A child prince. I'm so proud of it, I don't know what to do. And one grateful duchess.